Hello, here is a video on the new GUI feature in custom NPCs 1.12. Uh, a lot of bugs have been fixed with this. There's still one or two left, but uh, it uh, is pretty much 90% there or more. Um, this is a little demo one I made, and I will just go over some of the things here real quick and then. Um, explain how you set something like this up. Uh, these are textured buttons here. Uh, they have textures to them. Uh, and this, the hover text as you can see, um, this is a regular button. These are regular buttons here. This is a text box. Box of te text. And um, this is a uh, textured rectangle, as are these two. This one has hover text, hover text, yes, and uh, this is a scroll box here. So that's what I have right now on the screen. Um, this, when you click on it, it will alter the location of that textured rectangle and make it go back and forth. It will actually go off the screen if you want. This one will change the color and this will close it down. We're not going to do that right now. This will go to a new GUI and I have four different ones and I'll explain that later. Um, and this will tell which item in the scroll box is selected. So I guess one is selected by default. I don't know if you can see that. It says one. But if I go down through here and I can select, you can select multiple items in the text box. So two, seven, and ten. Okay, I thought I, two, three. Let's try that again. I thought I Click two and three. Let's see. Okay, that's that doesn't seem to be working quite right. Seven, ten. Okay, that works right. I don't know. One. Maybe I, let's see, six and eight. Okay, maybe I clicked off on one. You can select them and unselect them but like this. And as, as you can see here, or maybe you can't, it's too dark, but every time I click this, there's a scroll box function that's activated, and that will... Uh, I can make that do something and all that's doing is telling me what's in this text box here. Okay, so something important to know is that to make a GUI you have to have a uh, background that's 256 by 256. I just made this one here. It's, it's basically a copy of the demo background that's found in the, this is a resource pack I have it's uh, in the assets minecraft textures GUI directory and this is uh, 256 by 256 for the background if you don't see it the book one is 256 by 256 and then I made this two block one which is also the same size and uh, if you see that's just a blank one this one if you make the um, if you define the, the GUI uh, larger than the uh, 256 by 256, it will repeat the pattern, as you can see. Uh, that's the two blocks one, and that's, I created it at 500 and two, instead of 248. Um, so if, when, if you increase it, it will repeat whatever pattern you have. So that might be useful at some point, I don't know. And this one, um, I made 
I uh, was kind of naive when I was first tried this out, and so I just left this mistake in here. But if you look at the book, um, PGN, there's blank space in here. Actually, there's a little bit of blank space on top, and so all I did was measure the size of the book. But it's uh, it's uh, coming down like here and over to here. So that's what it's showing there. Um, so if you would want this to be used in your actual GUI, you would just have to make it wider and, and understand that um, to use, you're going to have to, if you want to position anything, you're going to have to position it over over here to about like 35 or something like that. So it's not the edge of the image. That's kind of obvious now, but it's uh, it's something that you could run across. Um, this is where I got the background for the, some of the uh, buttons and also those those uh, item slots, which I'll go over later. Uh, here is the colors, which change oops, which changes the colors there. That is uh, textured rectangles, basically just changing the position of which. Um, background you want by 30 because each one of these is is about a 30 by 30 square I believe is what it is and uh, so they look rectangular I guess it's uh, anyway um, so that's how that color is is being changed um, oh widgets no that's not the uh, the arrows are coming from this resource pack PGN here, which gives the arrows. I don't have that open right now, but uh, so that's what that does. Um, this can remove the element. That can remove um, that by just clicking on it. There's a remove elements um, function. I believe it's component is what they're called. Um, and this closes it down. Okay, so that's what works. Um, and you can see it says close box with text. Now that that broadcast is coming actually from the button function. There's uh, four uh, functions. There's the button function and the close GUI function, scroll function, and the GUI slot function. The close function doesn't quite work, otherwise it should say close function. Um, it was saying say scroll function when I was selecting that. It was getting the uh, information out of the box there. And the, the slot item slot function I will go over now. It has some issues here. Let's see, I can just... Uh, Oops. We'll uncomment that out and you can see what that is all about. Um, okay, so we have an item slot here with an item in it and then another item slot. Um, and actually there's a item slot right here you can see. You can see it highlighting. Um, that's at zero, 00. For some reason buttons push push item slots around so you have to kind of uh, take that into account. These were positioned by finding the right position at because uh, I had to offset for some reason th these over here. Uh, this is at like um, I don't know what that is. It's like at 50 or something like that. So I had to like subtract 50 and uh, move that over there to make it line up with this uh, textured rectangle behind it. Um, and also, for some reason, when item slots are on, this does no, no longer works. Um, I think this works still. Yes, that works. And. This will see, as you can see, it says uh, slot function ABC. So when I pick this up, it uh, 
it runs a function and I think I'll have to check this out it used to double that function but this this um, uh, item slot is uh, well that textured rectangle I should say is this one here with the uh, with the opaque background this one's the transparent background so the transparent background looks a lot better um, than that one because it's it's kind of obscures it because of uh, it's not transparent um, probably put that up there um, so let me see close ABC okay let's try this again if I pick this up okay now it just ran once okay yes it's just running once it was double running uh, when you like picked it up it would it would run the function twice I think that's null and see these don't work for some reason for some reason I can't update the texture rectangles uh, when I have these item slots on but that's the big bug I don't think I've showed this. This is what happens when you don't have a background that's 256 by 256. This is the um, stream indicator. This is a 16 by 64 and it looks kind of neat and if you knew exactly what you're doing maybe you could <laughs> maybe you could use something like this but basically it'll stretch whatever uh, image you use for a background if you're not using a 256 by 256 um, background image it's going to stretch it um, which you know you have to really know what you're doing with that um, so okay I just wanted to go over the actual script that runs this this could be in a NPC but uh, it's an interact event in the scripted lock and you first create the GUI and you define a location here of the uh, that you want to use and then you set a background okay so in each um, item in a GUI has a ID number and this is one the buttons are 10 11 uh, scroll uh, no, item item slots do not have ID numbers I'm not sure why that is but anyway so you create that you create an area and then you have a background behind it there is no offset uh, unlike other uh, components here so this is 248 by 166 so that uh, just grabs the uh, this from here over to here and then down to the um, down to the bottom here 166 is what it does so that's uh, how you set up the initial size of it uh, these textured buttons um, as you can see they have a text to them and I just kind of made a blank space and then that way they're offset to the side of them um, that's their ID this is uh, where they are on the uh, on this resource pack uh, no wait a second that X there's 30 30 wide that would be let me see um, Textured button. Okay, this is the textured button I'm using here. And so position height and then the position offset in the texture. Yes, okay. So this is their position. It's at 10, 0, and it's 30, 30. This one's at 10, 30. So this is 10, 0, so this is right at the top, and then this is 10, 30, coming down like that. Um, and let me, there's something I should explain here that uh, you see how these things are, they look like they're moving, and I didn't realize that at the time, but how that is uh, going like that is if you go to this one here, uh, I actually messed up a little bit I guess you could say but uh, it, it, it makes it look like it's moving because 
I went from 0, 0 to and then 30, 0 is where I'm taking the second one if you're following me. So 0, 0, and it took a 30 chunk like that, and the next one is 30, 0. And when you hover over it, a textured button, or any kind of button, it, it takes the image below it also. And that's how this other button also works in the uh, in this one that I showed you. Bring that in here. I don't have that open a second. And uh, this one. So when I take this button, it, it flips down here when you hover over it automatically, as you can see. See, it turns blue. That's actually dropping down an equal number of spaces if, if you follow me. So if you if you get this perfectly in the center here, um, it will drop down when you hover over it. Uh, it does that automatically. I guess it's just a feature of the button. And, and these seem to move because I didn't get it exactly uh, in the middle of this uh, diagram, if we can go back to that. So, Oh, no, this one. Yeah, this one. So I didn't get it quite in the middle between these two, so when I hover over it, it drops down. Okay, that's a long story for buttons, but that's the way it works. Uh, so this is a regular button here. Uh, item, this is the position and how big it is. Uh, text field, same item. Uh, position, this, this is the X and the Y in the negative direction. Uh, texture rectangles, they're similar. Uh, except they have also a position of, um, see this one is 30-30 and it starts 0-0 in that colors box I showed you earlier. Uh, this one here. And so it moves along the line then. Then I, I alter its, uh, its uh, offset of this file, this background file. Uh, then these are just simple buttons here. Uh, scroll similar you can define the size item position size and then you can have different elements in there as an array hover text you get the component you set the hover text uh, and then these are the other GUIs that are defined I showed that briefly about uh, the book sizing and things like that and then there's a the custom bunk button function uh, I just uh, has an event but ID so you, each button has an ID uh, that's how you that's where the ID comes into um, play. Uh, this is the rectangle. I'm changing color of. I move it left and right here. You can see it's X and Y position. Then I uh, update the component. And then at the end here, I also update the uh, GUI. But then various broadcasting here. The close, I said, doesn't, doesn't work. This never came up. It should have. Uh, this works. And this worked also the slot function. So that's it. I'll leave this in the in the uh, description, the link to it, and you can play around with it. Oh, I think that pretty much goes over everything I have going on here. Uh, there's an awful lot you can do with this. So thanks for watching.